Shalom Chabrim, I'm Steve Benun. you're watching Israeli News Live and today I'm going to be doing just a bit of a teaching uh, for you guys uh, rather than dealing with news right off the bat. We'll probably go into news a little bit later tonight. Uh, the situation still in Syria is uh, evolving uh, with the war that's going on there. we got trouble all over the globe. I mean, you have the situation in France where the police are just brutally at, uh, attacking their citizens. You have Venezuela. Um, and, of course, like I said, just, just numeral things that are going on. Uh, but I wanted to discuss with you guys the issue of revelation. How does God reveal himself to his people? And there's all sorts of beliefs out there, but I like to go right to the Word of God and look at this because, um, especially in light of uh, the Kabbalistic uh, views, the Kabbalistic teachings, uh, and uh, the the Gematria, which Gematria, Zohar, Kabbalist uh, uh, teaching is pretty much all kind of inter intertwined together. And, um, you know, I, I have, I, I hate to even admit it, but, you know, if you're Jewish, it doesn't mean that every Jew studies Kabbalah. But I have said uh, under rabbis and I have uh, d dove into what we consider the Sod, the secrets of, uh, the hidden secrets of Kabbalah. Uh, this is, uh, and, and believe me, there's many different levels to that as well. But uh, but we're talking more about the the gematria, the value of the letters. Uh, it is believed uh, uh, that the Hebrew language is the language of creation, and I can agree with that. I mean, I believe that God did speak Hebrew, and that's how He uh, brought this whole world, this universe, everything into existence is by His word. And uh, so I can agree with that. Uh, in the Kabbalist teachings, though, it is believed that every Hebrew letter itself uh, is has energy. It has life. Uh, there is a numeric value for every letter. Now, that is without saying. Uh, even in the, the way the Torah is numbered, it's by Hebrew letters, uh, using that for the number. Uh, like, for example, if you take the letter Aleph, Aleph is one. Bet is two. Uh, it's like Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, He, Vav, Zayn, etc., etc., right on down to the 22 letters of the Aleph, Bet. Uh, we have numeric values for each one of these letters. This is part of Kabbalah, but Kabbalah has four different levels. It is uh, it's, uh, said to be, uh, uh, I, well, actually the word Kabbalah means received tradition. It's an estric uh, wisdom, you, you might say. Uh, it is the both macro and micro uh, cos cosm of reality. Uh, we have the reality here. We have the hidden reality. And there's three levels to that. And I'm not about to go into trying to teach this by no means, because to me it's completely uh, off the Word of God. It's not God's way of for us to learn. But I think it's important that you kind of understand a little bit about how the Kabbalah actually works. Uh, maybe even a little bit about the historical side of this. I mean, there was uh, uh, Moses de, uh, de Leon, who is really the one that we have the evidence of that actually taught the Kabbalistic uh, teaching or the Zohar, where the book, the Zohar, uh, volumes of the Zohar actually come from uh, Moses de Leon or Moshe de Leon uh, from the 13th century. Now, that's debatable, too, amongst the different rabbis, because uh, there was Rabbi Akiva that was from the uh, second century, and Rabbi Akiva, uh, he had actually studied under uh, Rabbi uh, uh, Sh uh, so what is it? Shimon ben uh, Yako uh, Bar Yaakov, uh, and, uh, and I think he was around the, I know, right around the first and second century was when uh, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yaakov was alive and Rabbi Akiva had studied under him. And now this is all, all this information here. None of this is factual. We cannot say that, um, that he actually is the originator of the, uh, the Zohar. It is only presumed uh, that he is uh, because the only evidence that we really have is from Moses de Leon, uh, the 13th century rabbi. And this, in fact, this is, he was in Spain, and this is where the, the Zohar, uh, the, the, the Kabbalistic uh, teachings really begin to flourish. Uh, it's also, 
is believed that the the Kabbalah was taught, and, and, and again, understand, this isn't Steve. I'm only telling you from uh, from rabbinical uh, teachings where they get this from. They believe that it goes all the way back to Adam, that Adam and Abraham, Moses and Joshua all knew Kabbalah. Uh, I don't agree with that, but nonetheless, that's what's believed and that this has been something that was passed down and that it really belongs to a secret society of a group of individuals and especially in the early days they believed up until the time of uh, Moses uh, de Leon in the 13th century that only men that were at least 40 years of age and men that were very well uh, knowledgeable in Torah both oral and written Torah uh, were able and allowed and had the aptitude to be able to receive these deeper teachings. And this is why they say it was really never known that uh, uh, Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi, um, uh, Rabbi Yaakov, uh, Bar Yaakov, th these, were the, these were the ones that was, it was really never known about these teachings. Uh, but there, there are considered to be four uh, levels of... Um, of the Kabbalah, and it's called Paradis, is, uh, is the, I guess you'd call it an acronym uh, for the, the levels, and uh, it's uh, Peshat is one, Remez is the other, uh, I think it's uh, Drush and Sod. Uh, now, Parashat is the simple meaning. In other words, it's taking the written Torah and it's giving you the simple, simplistic meaning of what's actually being written there. So if you're writing about the story of Joseph, you have the simplistic meaning right there of the story of Joseph. All right. Uh, then you have uh, Remez, which is dealing with the allegorical sense. How does that story apply? Now, I will admit, in divine revelation, we do get the elements of an allegorical uh, sense. We do get the, the, the uh, um, we can get the third level as well, the Drush, which is the uh, life lessons that can be learned from it. But in the Sod, and Sod is literally a Hebrew word which means secret, or like uh, there's a famous song, Beli Sodot, um, without a secret. And uh, so the word sod here is the hidden, the very hidden, the depths of the meanings of these words here. And um, are, are the hidden hidden meanings that, are, that is in Kabbalah. And again, there's a lot of different ways you can go with this. And I'm just really just kind of giving you the crash, super, what, three minute course of what Kabbalah actually is. And it's far deeper than that. Uh, and, and this is also what troubles me is the depth of the way it's made because we know that Yeshua, and I've got it up here for you. In fact, let me just see if I can, if I've got the correct one up here. Um, yeah, right here. I'm, I've got the Hebrew Matthew up here in front of me. At that time, Jesus raised himself up and said, Be praised, my Father, creator of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these words from the wise and prudent and revealed them to the humble. And the King James Version has said, unto babes, all right? You know, so when God can reveal himself uh, to, to the humble there, and by the way, when we're dealing with the word humble, we're talking about uh, ga galit. Let's see if I can find it up here. Here we go, right here. Begalit, the same, same word that is used in the, uh, the Old Testament as well for the word revealed. It's an uncovering, making something known. But he does it for the humble, not for the 40-year-olds and above, and not for those well-knowledge. Now, I realize in modern times, everybody is studying uh, when it comes to uh, Kabbalah. It's become such a, like a mainstream idea for everybody to study. But it's completely away from the true truth of God's Word. And I believe that it's actually uh, because of this numerology, getting into the numerology uh, of Kabbalah and joining these words together based on numeric value is where we really get into a dangerous uh, place, especially when we consider what the Word of God says about the things we should not do. Uh, and I know that people may just disagree with me on this, but let me, I'll share that with you in just a moment. All right. So, uh, and as, as you guys know, for example, if we go, if we go back into the Kabbalah, Kabbalistic teachings, one of the big issues about the coming Messiah, uh, the Kabbalists actually believe that this, the Messiah is the whole, is the Holy Serpent. 
Why do they say that? Because of the numeric value. Uh, the word Moshiach and the word Nachash both have the exact same numerical value. I think it's 358 is the numeric value for, for those two words. They equal the same. So therefore, they take the serpent and they type the serpent with the Messiah as an equalness to, the, to each other because from a Kabbalistic view, it is equality in the numbers. All right. So let me kind of give you a simple idea of how uh, the base, let's say the very basics of Kabbalah would actually work here. All right. And I don't really have a good way to show you this, but let me just see if I can. Yeah, here we go. All right. So I'm going to do this in a very elementary way. All right. We have Aleph Bet. All right. Aleph is the number one and uh, bet is the number two. Of course, you put a dagish there for the letter bet there. That'd be one and two. Now, that also is the name for father, which if you add the two together, one plus two, it equals three. All right. And then let's say you take and uh, we, we go next to the next one. We would say uh, im. All right. Im is it's easier to write with it sitting down. All right. Im is mother, you have 40 plus 1, which equals 41, right? I'm going to try to write this. Re well, now let me put it down. It's easier to write it laying down. Okay, then we have Yelid. All right, Yelid is for a child. Yod Lamed Dalit, right? All right, and see, and Yelid, what do we have here? We have uh, the Dalit is the number 4, Lamed is the number 30, and uh, Yod is the number 10. All right. And so what do we, what does that equal there? That equals 44. All right. Now, what do they get into when they're doing this? All right. The father and the mother, which the two values, 3 and 41, when they come together, they can make a yell at a child, which would what? Equal 44. All right. So that's kind of interesting. And no doubt, maybe there's something there that God has in, in, in respects to something in the simplicity of this. But when it comes to uh, taking this numerology and then joining these words together, like in the case of Nachash, Nun Chet Shin, and Mashiach, okay, Mem Vav Shin Chet, then what do we have here? Well, we might have an equal value of 358, but the problem is, is now you're typing the Messiah to the serpent and saying they're one and the same. All right, now where's the problem in that? Well, let me just show to you right here. This is in John's Gospel, the first chapter, verse 5. Now, let me just start with the first one. And in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Whoa, what do you know? So let's look at this in Hebrew then. All right. Now, if you recall... We had here in the beginning, Barashit bara Elohim at the Shemaim at the Aras. Okay, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The Haaras Hayata Tohu Vevochu Vechoshech. All right, Vechoshech and the darkness. Or if you take and drop the Chet and the Vav and you put a Nun Nachash. It's just kind of odd that Nachash and Choshech come from the same root right there, Chet Shin. From darkness and we know that there is a type in that because John actually caught it himself when he says here and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not see the serpent has no ability to recognize the true Christ the true Mashiach the true light of Almighty God all right so now, so it says the Hoshik Alpanech Tachum Veruach Elohim Chafet Alpanech Maim. The Spirit of God walked all over the face or hovered over the face of the waters, which is interesting because when Yeshua came to his apostles there, when they were in the ship, it was nighttime. They thought he was a spirit, and uh, and yet he walked 
on the water. He hovered over the water at night time. Comes to his apostles, right? But then what happens right after that? And God, and God said, let there be light, or it is light. And it was light. But what happened though? What did John notice? John got the revelation. That Hoshek, that serpent, couldn't comprehend the light. In other words, he had no revelation that Jesus Christ was the true Messiah. Now, I say that uh, because they're trying to join together these words. They tried to join together the serpent, Nachash, and of course, Moshiach, because of a numeric value. All right, so where's the problem with that? Let's take a look at Deuteronomy, right? This is Deuteronomy chapter 18. I go into this a lot with you guys for other reasons. All right, but I want to bring it up right here. When thou art coming to the land, this is when it's, they're being warned by Moses about coming into the promised land. When you come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. Well, what are their abominations? There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, one that useth divination, a soothsayer, uh, or an enchanter, or a sorcerer, or a charmer, or one that consulted the ghost of familiar spirit, or a necromancer. All right? Now, the word charmer right there that you have there in English is what really catches my attention. Chover. Chover. This word right here, they put on their charmer. Chover is joining something together, whether it be literally or figuratively it's joining something together but it's uh, it's considered like a divination all right now I was, let me see if i wonder if i actually let me pull up over here i'll just show you let me pull out i know that's in deuteronomy let me go over here i'll just show you even from strong's because i think you can see it through there is through strong's dictionary as well let me go see what that is as far as the verse again all right, that is in the 11th verse. I'll pull it up here for you. Um, 11th verse. Okay, here we go. All right, come on, pop up there. Here we go. Chaver. Okay, what? Yeah, there you go. Join, literally or figuratively, specifically by means of spells. All right, uh, to, that's why they call it a charmer. Uh, to be compact couple, have fellowship with, heap up, join, you know, see, to, to put together in a league. And this is what happens through Kabbalah when you're dealing with the Gematria. And a lot of times the Gematria is what they use for the deeper meanings, the deeper secrets. In the case of, like, as I'm using for this uh, analogy here, the uh, so-called Holy Serpent, the Nachash, and the Mashiach, because they say they have the same numeric value. What are they doing? They're joining them together. Now, we might argue that Moses wasn't specifically talking about something like that, but when we're trying to do something like this, it is not God's provided way of revealing himself. That's where I have an issue with it. As I brought out to you already, God said in his word there through, uh, where was it, through John here. Wait, wait a minute. Uh, no, 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 no. Through Matthew. Find the right place here. You know, that, uh, and this was, he says, Truly I say unto you that it shall be easier for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for you. At the time Jesus raised himself up and said, Be praised, my Father, Creator of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these words from the wise, from the wise and prudent and revealed them uh, to the humble, or to babes which would learn. So revelation is supposed to be simple. And revelation is not, some mysticism are going into a gematria and breaking down a bunch of numbers and, and words, etc. All right, so let's take a look at another uh, example here in 1 Samuel. Uh, let's see, which chapter are we in in 1 Samuel? I think it's chapter 3. Yep, 1 Samuel chapter 3. <clears throat> the Lord called yet again Samuel, and Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. All right? So there comes a 
revealing, and the revealing is what? Of the word. Now, again, the word revealed is to make something known, to uncover it, to uncover the mystery of it. All right? And if we look at the book of Numbers, uh, chapter 12, and Miriam arose and spoke again to Moses because the Cushite woman whom he had married, for he had married a Cushite woman, and they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only with Moses? Hath he not spoken also with us? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men that were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spoke suddenly unto Moses and to Aaron and unto Miriam, and came out ye th uh, three unto the tent of meeting, and they three came out. And the Lord came down in a pillar of a cloud, uh, and stood at the door of the tent, and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, do make myself known unto him in a vision. I do speak with him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so. He is trusted in all my house. With him do I speak mouth to mouth, even manifestedly, and not in dark speeches, and similitude to the Lord doth he behold. Wherefore then were you not afraid to speak against my servant, against Moses? So how does God make himself known? To a prophet in dreams and in visions. Right? We also, what do we have in Amos? Very similar, right? For the Lord God will do nothing, but he what? He revealeth his counsel, or literally, his secrets. See? Sodo, uh, sod is secrets. Sodo, all right? He revealeth ki in gela. That's revealed, all right? For with revelation. That's literally, literally the way you would have to translate it. Ki lo yase adonai. Yehovah, Devar, okay, for the Lord God, or excuse me, I'm sorry, uh, for, for, for he doesn't do anything, this is what it says, they actually got it, it's kind of flipped around in, in Hebrew and in English, for God does nothing, the Lord God does nothing, all right, but his word, Devar, see, uh, which he, which with, with revelation, his secrets, he makes known to his prophets. All right? So to make it worded it simple, they kind of flip it all around. For the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets or his counsel unto his servants, the prophets. All right? So the thing is, is, with, is literally in gila, with revelation, God reveals his secrets. And he does it, as we already see with Moses, when God spoke to, uh, to Aaron and Miriam through dreams and visions. All right. Now, also, there's another uh, script place in the scripture. Let me see if I can just pull it up there. Uh, it's called similitude. Okay, here. So what we're looking at is in the uh, the book of Hosea. I knew I'd seen. I knew it was there somewhere. It just took me a few minutes here to, go, to look it up. I had to pause for a moment to find it for you guys. But uh, let's take Hosea chapter. Uh, what are we looking at? Chapter twelve, I believe it is. Yes. But I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt. I will yet again make thee to dwell in tents, as in the days of the appointed season. I have also spoken unto the prophets. I have multiplied visions, and by the ministry of the prophets of I, I have used similitudes. You know, in other words, the prophets using types to show hidden mysteries that are in his word. Okay, I mean, we just sit there, we used one for you just a moment ago when we were talking about how that the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters over in Genesis and yet compared as a similitude how that Yeshua, at nighttime, he actually walked on the water to, the, to his apostles there that were in the ship. There's, there is a similitude in the word of God that was hidden there by his prophet Moses. 
And this is what God does. God reveals these hidden things like this. And it's not through a gemetria, uh, through Kabbalah, you know, because if the problem is if you get into Kabbalah like that, you get into the gemetria side of this, trying to uncover the, the deep secrets of God, that's how you end up with a mess. That's how you end up putting the serpent and the Messiah as one and the same. The only, the only similitude I could see in something like that is that you have an Antichrist, a serpent Messiah, but they call it the Holy Serpent. You see how you can twist the Word of God? I mean, even Daniel. Look here, Daniel chapter 2. Then was the secret what? Revealed unto Daniel how in a vision of the night. He had a dream. But you got to remember, too, the multitudes of, multitude of dreams are vanity, as the Scripture says. I mean, they really mean nothing whatsoever. It could be something on your mind. I mean, there's all kinds of things. It's what people have to be careful about when they go out there and they just start telling all the dreams that they have. I mean, how many of them are out there on the Internet that never came to pass? I see it all the time. Right? God's Word is sacred. He will reveal Himself. To those that are humble of heart, to the babes that would learn. You don't need a Kabbalah to be able to learn the Word of God, to, to learn the deep mysteries of God. Just a simple heart and a hunger and desire to know Him more. You don't need as Kabbalah, let me see, I got the picture down on the bottom here. You don't need the uh, Kabbalistic tree of life here. See, this is how you get such, this is how everything gets all perverted. Yeshua is the tree of life. Now, the Kabbalists believe that there is three more levels up above that. Now, they have Ain, Ain, Sof, Ain, Sof, Ar. Ain, Sof, by the way, just means without ending. Sof is end, Ain means without. Okay, Ain, Sof. They call that the infinite, which is everything above. And through all this, uh, secret learning, the sword of Kabbalah, you can then learn and go beyond the tree of life and go higher into the spheres. They got all kinds of perversions in, in this tree here. Yeshua is the tree of life. This is why the book that I'm trying to write, What Have Rabbis Missed? It's not only needed by rabbis, it's needed by Christians and pastors to recognize who Yeshua really is. Because they're going to end up tricking the people. The people are going to fall for a lie. And, and, and you know, the Bible says you can believe a lie and be damned by it. I don't want to be damned by no lie. I know that Yeshua is the tree of life. When he breathed in the nostrils of Adam, Nishmat Chaim, Ipakne Pa'av Nishmat Chaim was what the scripture says. He breathed into his nostrils a breath of life. What is the word Chaim? It is life. What is the tree in the garden? It's Chaim. So what's the fruit of the tree of life? Chaim. God breathed it freely into Adam's nostrils, the Chaim, and he became what? A living soul. Nefesh Chaya. All right, if man becomes a living soul, and that's a singular, but he put the plural form of the life in him, then well, when Eve came out, she must have been filled with the same life then, huh? She must have also been a nefesh chaya. No way around it. And then when Yeshua come on the earth, what did he do? He did what the prophecy in Hosea said. Speaks about the sons of God. Talking about in the future time when there would be the sons of God be manifest. Yes. Yeshua, after his resurrection, breathes on his apostles and says, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. What was he doing? Just like he was in the Garden of Eden. <sighs> Breathing in their nostrils. Receive ye the Chaim. It's the tree of life. This is not the tree of life. Christ, Yeshua, Jesus Christ is that tree of life. Jeez. And he reveals his self through the simplicity of revelation, through, through dreams and visions, through the similitudes in his word. He makes those things known to prophets and prophetess through dreams and visions. 
But he also says, if the dream or vision doesn't come to pass, then do not hear them, for God never spoke to them. There's all kinds out there claiming to be prophets. God said to Jeremiah, I never spoke to them. So we got to be careful with what we're doing. All right? So you have to understand, because I know there's some people that have come and said, that, oh, Steve knows nothing about Kabbalah. I'm glad I didn't get any deeper than I did. You know? Oh, it can be fascinating. But like I said the other day, I took it because I was so upset with this uh, Doreen lady that goes out there and people are, Christians are studying under this lady because she's giving them the quote, the deeper meaning, the Kabbalistic way. The deeper meaning. She has the pure Kabbalah. No, she doesn't. That's, there's nothing pure about Kabbalah. Trying to show you this hidden secrets. I, I took the very thing that she did on one, I forget what it was, and she was showing these deeper meanings and stuff, you know, and then I took the same, I took the commentary and did the same thing for her, but I took and showed you all the negative sides of it too. You know, it's kind of like pick and choose. You, it's, you know, you got to pick a dealies, right? You pick what you want, choose what you want, don't do the rest. That's what they do with, with when they're dealing with this gometria. Taking the numbers, add it to the words, they equal this value, this one equals this value, you know. They put Trump as being some kind of great savior to the world. But I can also take the value, the numeric values in Gematria about Trump and show you that he's a devil in hell and a few other words that go with it too. Does that mean that he is? No. Even the negative doesn't mean it's the case. He's got time to repent. He's got time to get his life right. Will he? I have no idea. I hope he does. Guys, you gotta, you, we can't play like this. It is too late in the game. It is too serious of an hour. Take it to heart. I trust you will. I'm Steve Benoon. Listen, if truth is what you want to hear and you want to support truth, please, by all means, do. We need your help. And don't forget, I, I'm not, I can't respond to all the emails I get. StephenBenoon at gmail.com. Send us your address, your email address, your mailing address, you know, because if something uh, happens, heaven forbid, they shut this channel down. We need a way to contact you guys. I'll put my email in the description below, and we'll just start compiling this information so we have a way to be able to reach you if something like that were to happen. We are. We have a brother right now. He's working on uh, creating a app for Israeli News Live. Uh, for our website there, and we're also we're going to build a website that fully hosts everything independent of YouTube. Uh, we'll still air on YouTube, but we're going to try to get this up and going for you guys in the event we get hit one way. We've got a backup plan uh, as well because we want truth to be out there. I'm Steve Benoon. Uh, you can support this broadcast. Let me just make it some places so you know. Because sometimes people write us and say, we went on to your website, IsraeliNewsLive.org, and we couldn't give. It doesn't allow me to give. All right, so if you're on my website, you'll see the address right there on the website. It also a lot of times appears at the bottom of the screen here at the end of the broadcast. Um, you can donate by mail. Uh, you can send your check uh, to either Stephen Benoon. Uh, which is what we have appearing now at the bottom of the screen here, uh, or Danoon Institute, either way. And um, uh, but also you can uh, you can also if you can't if you don't want to do it by mail you don't you you don't want to uh, you're having trouble with doing it online there. Go to Patreon, Patreon.com forward slash Israeli News Live. You can. Do a, a small commitment over there. It doesn't take a big commitment. Even if you're not watching what's going on on Patreon, it gives you another avenue to be able to help support the broadcast. And also, subscribe to the channel. YouTube is constantly taking people out of the subscription. Go resubscribe. Make sure you're in there. And thumbs up the video as well. Let's drive them nuts because they hate the truth and they're they are really coming against us now like never before. So we need those of you that appreciate the truth. Thumbs up it. Support the broadcast. 
Uh, we've got a very special guest coming on tomorrow as well here on Israeli News Live. We want to share more information with you. Uh, and so we thank you and thank you for your love and kindness and your prayers as well for this ministry. Shalom in the world of Amish. Thank you.